I want you to imagine something simple. Let's imagine that we are in the supermarket. We're walking in the aisle, surrounded by many food products that are trying to steal our attention. But then our eyes are suddenly focused on this one unique milk product, looking like this. Perfect day, animal-free milk, 2% and brewed with love. What kind of milk is this? Milk is supposed to be made from the cows, the animal. Why is it say animal-free? Now you're curious, you're checking the price, it's still affordable for you. Then you pay for it, you bring it home, then you try it. And it tastes like regular milk. Nothing seems wrong. But of course you want to check the composition. It's usually behind, very small, almost as if the producers hoping you won't see the tax. And the ingredients goes like this. Ingredients, whey base containing water, animal-free whey protein, coconut oil, less than 2% cane sugar, sunflower oil, inulin, glycerin, and more and more and more. You quickly search on Google, what kind of milk mixed with weird ingredients like this? Then you learn that Perfect Day is a food technology startup company based in Berkeley, California, that has developed a process of creating milk protein by fermentation technique and technology. So animal free means they're not taking the milk from the cows. They create it in the laboratory. Now you're disappointed, you're asking yourself, why do they have to make milk like this? There's nothing wrong with the regular milk. Now this may sound like a science fiction story, like they create natural things inside the laboratory. But let me tell you that in the future, that we may see more and more products like this. We could see that meat that doesn't come from the animals. We could see eggs that doesn't come from the chickens. And we could see the cheese that isn't made from the milk. Technology is really changing our foods. My name is Dennis Guido and I'm content creator of food technology. And the idea that I want to bring here is pretty simple. I want every person to be more aware and conscious of what they eat. Why do you eat what you eat? What kind of process happened to the foods? How did it get from the farm to your table? Or simply, what's inside the foods? I used to not care about this as well, but since I've worked inside the food industry, especially in the laboratory, I realized that we do need to pay attention to this matter. That's why here today, I want to share with you why do you want to know your food. Today, our food system is getting more complex. Our population is growing. Our climate is changing and our food preferences keeps evolving. Global human population has reached 8.0 billion in mid-November 2022, from 2.5 billion in 1950. Even though we have been feeding billions of more people than we were in 19th century, thanks to the agricultural technology. In the next 30 years, it is expected to reach 9.7 billion people or we will have two more billions of people in the future. All people have to eat. It means that we will have to increase our food as well. Talking simply, we could cultivate other lands and grow our crops or foods. But sadly, as we can see here, that some of our land is already degraded. Data by FAO, that 33% of our earth soil globally is already degraded means we lose the land that we could use to farm in indonesia data from badan pusat statistik mentioned that our national agricultural land 
in 2009 was 8.07 million hectares. In the next 10 years, in 2019, it is reduced to 7.46 million hectares. This is happening because demand for houses, tourism, roads, and other infrastructures. Or to make it easier, I will show you this graphic. This is an example from a cereal crops production. We could see that the population on the red line is growing, and the production of cereal crops following the population growth is also increasing. But the area, the land that we could use to grow the cereal crops in the, in the gray line in the bottom, is getting stagnant, it's keeping stable. So we use the same land area to grow more and more of foods. This is obviously not sustainable for our future and the foods. Not to forget to mention that our farmers is getting older too. This article has recently published in April this year, and the first sentence says it all. Today, the, re the replacement of aging agricultural population has become a global challenge in many food producing countries. Since, since young people have become less motivated to take over family farms, because, working, because farming doesn't give them enough income, and the working conditions are not ideal. We could ask ourselves, who will grow and nourish our foods in the future? Also, we have climate change, which affects our crops production and the earth soil really bad. Since this year, it's not even called global warming anymore. It's called global boiling. This could reduce the land ability to recover and the crops production yield or how much foods we could create. Mentioned by Chow et al. in 2017, that an increase of one degree Celsius temperature could reduce the global production of wheat by approximately 6%, rice by 3%, maize or corn by 7.4%, and soybean by 3.1%. This is why we are requested to reduce our gas emission. Or in food context, we are suggested to reduce our meat or milk consumption. Since as we know that beef is the top contributor of greenhouse emission, greenhouse gas emission. There are many other food problems that I haven't mentioned, like food diversity or food waste. But to conclude, the main problem is, while we need more foods that are sustainable, affordable, tasty, nutritious, and safe for our growing population. The food itself is getting harder and more complex to produce. But the good news is, scientists have started to learn and try to tackle these challenges with research and technology. Welcome to the field of study called food technology, which I've learned and have become part of my life and career. Mostly, we learn and use chemistry, physics, biology, engineering, nutrition, and many more to create better foods for us. After we learn this food, we usually work inside the food industry, or become scientists, entrepreneur, or maybe become content creator like me. And I've been impressed with the growth of food technology since around three years ago. I work as a researcher or what they call a formulator, who can put any food ingredients on my product to make the food products more safe and tasty. And, I, and while I was there, I was always impressed by many new ingredients or additives I could use on my own product, provided by many food companies around the world. For example, I have ever used stevia, the natural sweetener, to reduce the sugar amount on my product. This stevia could replicate the sweetness of sugar without giving us any calories. And this is used to tackle the overconsumption of sugar. I also have ever used various kinds of food flavorings 
For example, I could make strawberry drink with the taste, color, aroma of real strawberry without using real strawberry inside. With this various flavoring, I could make drink with any flavor just from inside the lab. So while I was there, I've met many new ingredients or additives to replace the originality and the authenticity of real foods. Some may use to make the products cheaper, to make it more profitable for the company. Some may use to make it having better value for us. That's why I want people to be more aware of these ingredients because they are here, they're inside foods around us, and it's usually hidden by the producers. Besides ingredients, there are also food technologies to make products, to make foods become more long-lasting using process technology and using preservatives. There are technologies to make the packaging of foods, to make it savor and visually good. And also there are technologies to extract the healthiest part of the plants and put, it, and put the extract on the other food products. But the technologies that I want to mention and share here is the technologies that using advanced science that may replace our foods in the future. So today, many companies are now competing in replacing our main protein for sources or foods like milk or meat. And I have listed many food technology startup companies that could, that could create a process or products to replace our main protein sources. So I want you guys to take a look at some of those. The first, we got Umaro Foods from, from California. They could turn seaweed into bacon products. And then we got corn from UK. They could create what's called mycoprotein, a protein made by a fungi species called Fusarium venenatum. And this could turn into meat products. The next, we got Perfect Day the company that creates milk protein that I've introduced at the start. And if you, want, if you want to know how they make the proteins, so generally they took a yeast, kind of living organisms in the nature, and they modified this yeast, so this yeast could produce the milk proteins for them, the similar milk proteins as what they found in the cows. On in te or in technology terms, this is called cellular agriculture. And lastly, I want to introduce the coolest, at least for me. This is, called, this is from Upside Foods. They could create what's called cultured meats. So basically, they could take small amount of cells from the chickens, and they put it on the cultivators. And, this cultivator, and inside the cultivators, they, they give them the right nutrients, and the cells will multiply and grow into meat. Now you guys, are you ready for this kind of technologies? Now I've mentioned uh, the problems, the technologies, but maybe something is missing. What is our role as the consumer, as someone who will buy the foods? Because like I've mentioned, this feels like it's the food producer's problem, like they need to work more on the foods or it feels like it's the food policy makers' problem, like they need to create better regulation for the foods. But I will tell you that it's not. The food system problem is our problem too. Because in the end, it's going to be us who choose, buy, and consume the foods. It's going to be us who decide the technologies that I've mentioned, if it's going to be useful or not. Because let me tell you that the power of choosing foods is incredibly powerful for our food system. Our food choices influence the type of foods we see in the market. Because back when I started to create products for the company, firstly, I need to know your likings or preferences first to make products that you will choose later and buy. For example, I saw the trend of people starting to get healthy lifestyle. Then I want my product to be more nutritious. I will give them the right vitamins and the other healthy ingredients. 
or if I saw the trend of people don't want the product to be really sweet, then I would reduce the sugar amount on my product. Or the producers or the food producers saw the trend that you don't want to drink milk from the cows anymore, that you are already, already care about the planet, you already care about the health and the overpopulation of the cows. Then the producers would create milk from the soy, oats, and many others. It's how we shape the foods around us. Our food choices influence the food system. Because every day we choose about which and how much foods we eat. We eat two or three times a day with additional snacks or desserts in between our meals. That's why I want people to be more aware aware of the problems behind the foods, aware of the technologies, and aware of what you're going to eat next for yourself or for your children in the future. And here are three useful tips to make you more aware of your foods. The first we got, I want you guys to practice mindful eating. So basically, whenever you eat, you try to, whenever you eat, you try to eat without using your phone or TV. You should be more conscious when you choose what to eat. You want to experience fully the foods. You want to know where the food comes from. And you want to know what kind of ingredients are inside your food. Second, I want you to learn how to read food labels. This is especially important when you, read, when you eat a lot of processed foods. You want to understand how to read the nutrition label. You want to know how, much, how many portions you are suggested to eat. You want to know what kind of ingredients are inside your foods. And I want you to know how you, you store the foods or the expiry dates. And lastly, I want you to understand the basic of our food system, technology, and also nutrition. This is, of course, to let you getting better at choosing your foods later. Now lastly, I want to say to you guys that only by being aware of our foods that we are going to have better food choices. And by, being have, and by having better food choices, we could help to resolve our food problems and getting better foods and healthier in the future. Thank you.